Sorry for a little bit of a late start here, but we are here. We are excited about today's broadcast. God's just doing amazing things. And I think, you know, uh, the time for this divine turnaround is now. We're going to share with you why in this uh, upcoming broadcast. So, Chris Mitchell, would you please, as is uh, custom, go ahead and pray, and then uh, we will get rolling. Absolutely. So, Father, we just thank you today. We thank you that Ephesians 1.11 says that not only have you chosen us, but you have worked all things according to the purpose of your own will as it relates to us. So, Lord, today we tap into the mind and the counsel of the Father concerning us. We thank you, Lord, that you bring strength to your purpose to see it through to completion. We thank you, Father, that you are initiating and causing your people to shift and to move in an alignment with you as you solidify a turnaround for this hour of history. So, Lord, we give you praise. We glorify you. We honor your name. We set this part of t- uh, we set this time apart for you. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that your voice would be heard with clarion precision, that we would hear and perceive the counsel of your heart today as we move in sync with you. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So excited for today. Again, it is a very, very important day spiritually. Um, you can just sense it here in Washington, D.C. And uh, we're very excited uh, to report that the book that is broadcasting uh, nationally and globally promoting Turnaround Tuesday has just hit number one in the Amazon bestseller list. Bestseller for Ooh. charismatic and uh, uh, Pentecostal Christianity, that category. And I think it's right up there as well in spiritual warfare. So we're honored to see that. We're honored that uh, the Lord has uh, brought this forward. Uh, It came as a direct result of uh, Sid Roth's broadcast uh, that has been running over the past few days, an interview that uh, I I had the opportunity to uh, be on. And... um, So just in regards to this movement itself, we've been praying for almost an entire year since 222 of 2022. We've been asking God for this global movement that's been prophesied to uh, burst forth. And we're seeing the Lord give kind of the next phase of that rocket booster propelling us into a, a new season. So we're really excited about this. And uh, the person who made it all possible is an incredible warrior herself. Her name is Tina Pugh. Tina is uh, one of the uh, high-level leaders of Destiny Image. And just as a little background, both of our books, uh, our past two books, uh, have been published by Destiny Image, White House Watchmen, and then the book Turnaround Decrees. So here's a little backstory. Uh, Tina is hauntingly prophetic. She, she, we were, she proposed originally that we do a sequel to White House Watchmen. Um, and uh, so we started writing it, and, and she thought that the title of the book should be called Turnaround Decrees. And that, that really resonated with us especially after I had an amazing encounter on July 4th where the Lord confirmed uh, I saw the picture of the Declaration of Independence as I woke up on July 4th here in Washington, D.C., except the scroll was completely blank, and the Lord began to speak to me about his turnaround decrees, and that was confirmation of Tina Pugh's uh, uh, word or invitation or whatever you want to call it uh, to write a book called Turnaround Decrees. 
So as with Jolene, when Jolene speaks, I listen. When Tina speaks, <laughs> we listen. So we started writing the book, and then um, Lou Engel comes along and begins to prophesy over us about Turnaround Tuesday. And uh, Tina had, had shared with us that she felt that the content of the book needed to be very, very family-oriented. And we have kept this uh, dimension of the miracles God's brought forth in our own lives and world. We've kept this very private. We've just wanted our son and daughter to be able to blossom as who they are in Jesus now that they've really grabbed hold of a relationship with Christ. And sometimes that's best done kind of in relative obscurity from uh, the broader Christian community, if that makes sense, uh, at least the, the, the ministry world. So we've kind of been very jealous about guarding their, their hearts and guarding their privacy. Well, Lou Engel uh, confirms once again what Tina gave us as advice. She said, you know what? Uh, you need to have something that's really geared towards family because that's where God's heart and hand is in this hour is family revival. And then Lou Engel prophesies, he hears about turnaround uh, uh, Tuesday that from Christmas 2014 to Christmas 2015, our entire Lamplighter family engaged in breakthrough prayer for turnaround for our sons and daughter. And on Christmas Day 2015, our son Jonathan, one year to the day we began, he gave his life back to the Lord after having an open vision. Sid Roth did such an amazing job conveying <laughs> the open vision where my son, our son, came back to Christ. So really, really excited about this and excited to have Tina Pugh with us. And uh, Chris, thanks for the opening prayer, and we're going to just all flow together. But we want to hear from Tina right now. Tina, what's uh, the Lord speaking to you? What's on your heart? Welcome to Turnaround Tuesday. Thank you. Oh, well, you know, one thing that you just said um, really confirms what's on my heart. Because a lot of parents, when their kids are going through stuff, um, you feel super alone. And, um, and because for that very reason, just like you just said, a lot of parents are not hiding the fact that their kids are going through stuff because they're embarrassed or they feel um, it's not a prideful thing or a Christianese thing. It's just because we want to protect our kids. And right. so if, you know, once you, once you get close to people around you, you'll find out that you're not the only one. You'll find out that there's lots of people who are struggling with their kids. Um, their kids are having, you know, health problems. They're having, you know, crisis of faith. They're having all kinds of kinds of issues. And so I just don't want people to feel alone. I want you to feel like, you know, that you've got a family surrounding you and don't be afraid to, you know, ask for prayer from your loved ones. And, you know, not not for a shameless plug, but seriously, when you when you start reading books like this, you'll find that uh, that a lot of leaders uh, go through the same struggles that you do. There's there's nobody who's protected, um, who who gets to who gets to fly through this life without struggles. You know, we we know that we're going to walk through struggles, but we have the God of the turnaround on our side, who will make judgments on our behalf because we have the promises from God. So, um, so just wanted to encourage everybody today about that with your kids. A really, really good point, Tina. I think a lot of people, I mean, us included, uh, the kids see so much in the church world. They see so much of the warfare and the oppression and the stuff coming back at us. And then, and then the enemy has a special target on the children of people who are out there doing, doing the, he likes to take He's, he never fights fair. He always goes after the, the weakest part of the, your family or the weakest, and he doesn't fight fair. And it, it, it's such a good point. That's part of what we're, we're praying, being a family, praying for the family seems Thanks to be that. exactly yeah. what this show is all about. And that allows people to know that they're not alone and they can join with the group and we are much stronger in a group than we ever are fighting the enemy by ourselves. Amen. So that is such a wonderful point, Tina. 
Well, that's why I appreciate you guys doing this broadcast every week. You've been so faithful to do this and it just feels like people can have the support that they need. Um, and you know, that's one of the reasons that I ask you guys to do this book is because I feel like a lot of, there's so much power in the decree and there's so much power in joining with God's will and his plans and purposes for your life and joining with a community. Um, so I, um, that's why I asked you guys to do this because I felt like you guys do an excellent job of confirming that um, and, and teaching how to do, how to go to the Lord for a decree and the power of the decree. That was one of the special things that I feel like is so interesting about this book. Is it not just, it doesn't just give you pray, prayers that you can pray through, which it does do that, but it also teaches you how to get your very own decree from the Lord. Um, and that's what is really unique about this book. And it shares so many testimonies that really encourage you and um, help you to keep standing and stay strong and to keep coming before the Lord, even sometimes when your arms are getting weary, like the testimonies in here will keep you going. They will keep you um, on the right track. Well, we appreciate that, Tina, very, very much. And we appreciate your influence in our lives and in our ministry. Um, it's, it's far greater than I think you, you may know. So we love working with you. And um, I know that you have had some times of contending prayer for your own children. And um, I don't know if you want to say anything about that, but we just want to commend you for the breakthroughs that uh, have been secured through your prayers. Man, I mean, I, um, so my husband and I have been married since 1995, um, and we have three sons who are 27, 24, and 20. And so, as you can imagine, uh, we've, we've been through a lot. Uh, I would say probably more than a lot of people that I know. Um, and we've seen the hand of God, his faithfulness stand. Um, my kids are all doing well. They're all healthy. Um, and so praise God for that. We've seen miraculous things in our lives that are, are nothing other than miraculous. Like God's been so good and seen us through some really, really, really tough times. Yeah. And you guys have come through shining. That's what's Amen. so beautiful. And uh, we're grateful to you. Grateful to uh, your husband, Ryan, who's in addition to all of his other uh, areas of expertise, <laughs> incredible Photoshop artist, especially around birthday time. Yeah. And he, he, <laughs> he, he, he just wrote in the chat that he wanted that girl Tina's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> he is hilarious. Yes, he is. Yeah, he keeps us laughing. Literally, just his laugh sometimes just makes me laugh. I don't I have no idea what he's laughing at. I'll hear him laughing from the other room. And it just keeps joy coming around here for sure. That is awesome. Chris, uh, maybe you have some questions for Tina or comments or maybe whatever the Lord's uh, showing you, just uh, roll. Absolutely. Yeah, I love what, uh, Tina, I love what you were saying about uh, about the book and um, and also about uh, the heart of John and Jolene and the heart of this broadcast really, as Jolene said, which has been to be a family surrounding families and uh, just kind of lifting up the arms and, and coming alongside, because the truth of the matter is all of us are together in this journey and we're all contending uh, to see our sons and daughters uh, come into the full measure of God's intention for their lives. And so I, I love what you said about the power of decrees, because that's one of the things I think that as parents, um, sometimes if we're looking at our children for their behaviors, uh, where the way that they're currently behaving, um, things that they're involved in or drawn to, and we look at that as an indicator of, uh, of the trajectory that they're on, it can be very disheartening and, um, and very challenging on the soul because obviously, uh, we've invested as parents, you invest a great deal of sweat equity and blood equity and prayer and intercession uh, to see our children uh, come to encounter and to know the love of the Lord and the love of the Father as we have. And so I think that what you were talking about, the power of decrees, it's so important to understand and to uh, kind of take in 
apparent because we realize that there is something that it pre-existed the child's birth concerning the mind, counsel, and will of the father for this child. Mm -hmm. the, their birth was the evidence that they, were, they existed in the mind of the father before they ever came, before they ever were formed in their mother's womb. And so being able to have access to that through the Holy Spirit and uh, leaning into the Lord about, Lord, what was your, what was written in your books? Psalm 139, verse 16. What was written in your books concerning this child before they were even born? And aligning our intercession and decrees with those things as the Holy Spirit reveals them. I love what Paul says in uh, 1 Corinthians 14 that, when a man begins to pray, you're praying in an unknown tongue. He's praying out mysteries, things that were previously unknown, but that God can make fruitful in our understanding, pulling in the, the archives of the king, pulling out the scrolls of destiny concerning our children and allowing us to become mindful and aware of his intention and his heart uh, for our children, knowing that all of their days, all of their days were written in his book before even one of them came to be. And so I believe at a moment level, at a minute level, at a, you know, an hour level, we can we can align the with the intercession of Jesus and begin to decree out the substance of the book that was written of them. Just mm -hmm. as Jesus said in Hebrews 10, 7, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So my encouragement, I want to just say this to parents today, that your child, even no, no matter where they find themselves now or whatever uh, the circumstances look like now, just remember and call to mind the reality that God, before he formed that child in your womb, mama, that he wrote the book of their life. And this author never writes junk. All that he writes are best sellers. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verses one and two, we know that Jesus is the author and the finisher. And so as he's inscribed on the scrolls of destiny for our children, he's written good things. The substance of their books are good things. Uh, for them and for their impact upon culture and upon society. And so let's access the mind of the Father, the counsel of the Father, and begin to decree out His will and His purpose for our children. And Chris, I think you make a really awesome point. Um, when you're in the heat of crisis and when you're actually looking at what your children are doing and you're living amidst it and you're living amidst what's going on. It is so hard to pray anything other than help Jesus. Help. Right. I mean, many parents are just lifting up Jesus help me. And I remember I went through this time in, in my earlier years when I was in this tremendous warfare and all I could keep saying was help Lord help. And he yeah. finally said to me, Jolene, Ask me and decree some things like yeah. stop just at you. You're like praying out of the crisis and praying out wow. of the pain. He was yeah. like, I need you to ask, ask me what it is you need. I need you to decree what it is you need. And in the point of crisis that many families are in, they, they don't, they don't even know what to pray how That's to right. pray. They don't have the unction to pray. So if you can just pick up a wow. resource, if you can pick up, you know, it doesn't have to be our book, but any book, I'd love it to be our book. <laughs> but if you can pick up that resource and have something right on the page that you can just give a, a um, one sentence or one little prayer that it may come straight from the book that may be all the energy you have to mm. do with that moment the lord loves prayer that's targeted and we help you because we've already written the targeted prayers right. we've already written down the things we we wrote and prayed in our crisis and the things we decreed and the things so good. we not just for our family, but the things we decree for the nation, it's all right there as a resource to help you. So yeah, good. We, we found that, uh, you know, praying for our, our children is actually very good training for praying for the nation. In fact, when the Holy Spirit first spoke to me about how he's rendering his verdict of justice in favor of the saints, Daniel 7, 22 
This was back uh, in 2014. I was ready to take this uh, uh, declaration to the nation to see it turn around. I knew God had promised a national turnaround, just as in this season, he's promising the window of opportunity to complete the turnaround. So I was so excited about it. We are ready to go. We are setting our course. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, before you can stand for a turnaround for this nation, you must first stand for a turnaround for your own son and daughter. Come on. Yeah. And I, I've said this many times, but my heart kind of skipped a beat and then plunged because it's like I had more faith for the nation at the time than I did for my my children's turnaround. Mm. But all of their days are written in God's book. Come on. And he's got a preordained stamp of approval as you begin to make the declarations. Uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love That's it right. will eat the fruit. As you begin to declare their covenant destiny before the throne of God, you are laying the steps for the pathway of their redemption and turnaround. Yes. I'm telling you, it is so, so very powerful. And the Lord used this in an amazing way to confirm to us that, you know, even with the nation uh, and, and the challenges that are present and the challenges that we were facing at that time, that he's not done with the nation. You know, right. I mean, if he, in my opinion, if he could turn the nation, he could, I mean, if he could turn our son in, in, in the challenges that he was facing, uh, he can really do anything. Not that Jonathan was in such a really tough spot. He, he wasn't. But it, it was tough enough and, and the spiritual intensity behind the direction, misdirection, was so strong. Um, so we didn't really, you know, when, when he goes to a Christmas Christian college and learns that at a Christian college they teach him that Jesus is not Messiah and the Bible is not the Word of God, Mm. And he spirals for years on end after that's he's really uh, he's really like a type of of the United States. I mean, we're a Christian nation. We're founded on Christian roots and we, on, we've established education with morals on the Christian values. And so for the, the nation's kind of like that, like your son, like you started off on the right track and he's been taught over and over and over again that those things are wrong and irrelevant. And that's what's happening to our, our country right now is that we're being told those things are irrelevant, that they're they're bigoted when when our when our foundation is love, love of the father and love for each other. That those are our, our commandments. And and we're being told the opposite. We're being told that good is bad and bad is good. Um, so I think that your son is really a testimony to for our nation that what what was on the right track can be back on the right track again. We're not too far gone. Amen. Profound. Amen. It's very profound. Yes. Thanks, Dina. Chris, go ahead, man. Yeah, I just it, it's it's amazing that uh, the redemptive factor, the way that the Lord not only the rescuing from the pit um, and from the uh, uh, the devastation and circumstances that that we can find ourselves in, both as it relates to our children and as a, as it relates to the nation, uh, but it's the reality that he's able to convert the heart and the mind to the point where you you get the equilibrium back, where you start to gain um, uh, identity back, your your genuine true identity, instead of operating out of what has been imparted through culture, which is really rendered, um, uh, which is th what the enemy has tried to do with the United States and what he continues to try to do with our children, which is to bring them into a place of servanthood and slavery. And uh, and when you operate from that place for so long, uh, where you've, you've been conditioned on what to think, you've never been allowed the freedom and the, the liberty to actually come into the reality of God's heart and love. It's all been uh, uh, kind of uh, skewed and uh, forced upon you. Uh, now, seeing that what I believe that, Tina, just as you were expressing, that just as what happened in uh, John and Jolene's story, as they persevered in prayer, as they 
upon his life. Oh, it was an entire shifting, coming home of awakening to identity, to the place in the father's heart and the father's house. And I just want to speak that over all that are watching as it relates to your children. And I want to I want to add gasoline to the fuel of the fire in our hearts. I know that it's been as we contend both on the fronts of our families and as we contend uh, on the on the front of our nation and even nations. There are nations that are connecting on this broadcast and many of you who carry uh, the destiny of the place that you call home in your heart and you've contended just as you have for your home and for your children. Yeah. I just want to add gasoline by the spirit to that and say today that in the same way that the Lord awakened to identity, because that's what brings true liberty and freedom. See, when the when the product, the younger son in Luke 15, the story of the prodigal son, which should really be called the story of the faithful father, his, his The transformation and restoration wasn't complete when he came to himself in a hog pen because he still, after he awoken in the hog pen, he was still thinking, I'm not worthy. I'm no longer worthy to be called his son. So I'm going to make the journey back, but I've disqualified myself from sonship. I've disqualified myself from ever having intimacy or relationship with my father. I'll make myself like one of his servants. But I have news for you today that even just as the Lord is dealing with that spirit, the residue of that, as he's awakening sons and daughters, they will not have the residue of the slave mentality or slavery uh, mm -hmm. a cloak that's upon them that prevents them from rising into the full stature of the identity to which he's called them. And we prophesy the same thing over the United States of America, Man. that you are not a vagabond looking for identity. You are a nation founded upon covenant called of God. And we say mm -hmm. that upon our sons and daughters, that you were written in his books before you were even formed in your mother's womb. Your identity is solely found in him and you will rise into the stature to which your father has called you freed and liberated from the from the servitude that was subjected uh, upon you by the hands of an enemy who never loved you and never uh, valued you, but a father who redeems you and yes, places sir. you back into mm -hmm. the rightful place that you belong, brings you into inheritance, brings you into the full place of, of partaking of the father's substance in his house. And so, Lord, we just decree that right now in the matchless name of Jesus. And I think what a lot of people don't understand is actually the warfare and the fight is so much bigger than just their family. Right. Like this is what the nation is going through. Come on. The, the, this is what the enemy is throwing. He doesn't want kids to have an identity. He doesn't want them to know who they are. The, this is such a bigger battle. And many people think this just their isolated incident, their family's going through it, but they don't recognize that the battle is so much larger and that a lot of people don't have the tools they need or the understanding that they need. And I just want to pray into that now. Yes, Father, I thank you that you are bringing understanding to people. I mm -hmm. thank you that you are bringing um, resources into their hands, that they're going to begin to understand that they are a, we are a family fighting for the family. We mm. do know people mm. that have the tools to help. We know uh, resources and books to put in people's hands to help them fight this battle so they are not alone. And Father, I thank you for every parent that is struggling right now. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to come in and you're going to amaze them. Yes, Even today, yes, I Lord. declare, I decree a turnaround Child. in your thinking, in your situation, that you will begin to understand that this battle is so much larger than you know and the Lord is riding in on a swift horse. He is bringing what you need. He's bringing the tools you need. He's bringing other people in prayer groups. Our Jesus. favorite part about Turnaround Tuesday is when everyone comes and tells us, look, I started a Tuesday prayer group. We, all the mothers in the church are just getting together. Come all on. the couples in the church are getting together and we are seeing amazing results. 
So we just celebrate in advance, Lord, that you are riding in, giving, um, giving resources and giving other people to help people take this battle on that is so much bigger than themselves. One of my favorite scriptures to quote back to God is that my enemy is bigger than me. And I need your help. I need your strong arm. And I need others who know how to fight with me to mm -hmm. fight with me. And the enemy is not bigger than God. He's just bigger mm -hmm. than us personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I, just to put it in perspective, um, Lou Engel shared with us what he felt to be the missing piece of the revival that we're all expecting is mothers and fathers rising up and praying for their sons. Yes, sir. He said, that's the missing piece. He said that during the Jesus revolution, um, the Jesus revolution was really sparked by parents freaking out because they saw their sons and daughters being uh, lost to the drug culture, to the free sex culture, and uh, to the occult that was rising up in the 60s and, and into the 70s. And they began to contend for the eternal destiny and the destiny here on earth of their sons and daughters like they had never prayed before. It was just desperate prayer from moms and dads, and the Lord caught the desperate prayers of the mothers and fathers in a bowl. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 5 uh, uh, verse 8 talks about how our prayers rise as incense before the Lord and how he captures our prayers in a bowl. And, and Revelation 8, 5 talks about how there's a moment in time where the bowls are full and the yes. tiss one occurs and the revival breaks forth. And, and that was the missing piece of the equation. We wrote in turnaround decrees about um, a, a chance encounter on a... Uh, a ship in Alaska heading to like the, the furthest westernmost point of Alaska. <laughs> uh, and there just happened to be a guy who traveled the entire world after uh, 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 a 40, 50 year career, including right in the middle of the Jesus movement, the Jesus revolution and how the, a pastor wanted to quit. And he, uh, he was surrounded by uh, one or two intercessors who were diehards and they just refused to quit because all this craziness is going on where the next generation is being just uh, 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 stolen from their hands and hearts. And so the pastor wanted to quit, but the intercessor kept going and guess who won? It was the oh. intercessor. Oh. Some guy drunk, stoned and wearing a speedo bathing suit stumbled into the guy's church and uh, he had his elders come and try and tackle him to get him out but uh, the guy wanted to stay and he i guess sobered up and um, he came back the next week and the next week he was dressed normally and uh, he ended up giving his life to christ and then like a couple weeks later, uh, he came back again and asked permission to bring some of his friends over for a Monday night meeting. And for a pastor who was trying to evacuate the premises, that wasn't something he wanted to do as another church meeting. But he, he acquiesced, and it turned out this guy was very well known in Hollywood and brought wow. all of his Hollywood friends to the wow. And they all got rocked for Jesus. Many of them were <laughs> most all of them saved. Jesus. So listen, you may be at the end of your rope right now. You feel like you can't go on. You're at the point of no return. We were literally yeah. at the what is called the point of no return in Alaska, talking to this brother and um, uh, receiving from him. God is going to meet you at your point of no return and turn yes. that point of no return into a launching catalyst for new beginnings for you and for your children. I'm telling you, this is a word of the Lord right now. Divine turnaround is yours right now. We come into agreement for it. Yes. Loose the intercession for the turnaround that is needed state by state, family by family, person yes. by person in Jesus' name. 
We loose this turnaround now in the name of Jesus, covenantally and governmentally, for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we call forth this massive expansion of the turnaround family, the turnaround Tuesday family included, to contend for breakthrough until the Lord meets with uh, what can only be described as a, a, a move of the Spirit so far beyond our imagination, we can barely comprehend it right now. That's what's in store for us. Amen. And God's reminding me, actually, of I have found this to be true my entire walk when it seems like I am most ready to give up. When I've just done all my resources, done everything I know to do, it's at yeah. that moment that the Lord comes in. And he really shared with me on Hanukkah this uh, this past um, time in December. The Lord showed me about the Hanukkah candle. And, and you know the story that they only had oil for one day. And when that oil was done then the Lord supernaturally brought the oil for the, for the next days. And the Lord began to speak to me, Jolene, that's where my body of Christ is right now. They've been burning the candle at both ends. They have utilized all the oil that they have in and of their own strength. And I believe yeah. that's the same as parents. You've utilized all the oil that you have in and of your own strength. And the Lord said to me at that point is when I come in and I supernaturally light the flame and give you enough oil to finish the task. So, Lord, yeah. I just pray over every parent right now. I pray over everyone who thinks that they are at the end of what they have, end of their yes. resources, end of their energy, Lord. I pray over people's energy to continue to fight the battle. They are at their weakest point. And Lord, we just say that we have done everything we know how to do in and of ourselves. Come and supernaturally bring the yes. oil and light the flame to finish the project and finish the task, Lord. We are no longer going to rely on our own strength and our own abilities. We invite you, Holy Spirit, and Lord, I declare today the Holy oh. Spirit is coming in and finishing the yes. work that he has begun. He promises in his word that he is the one who will complete the task. So, Father, we have... We have burned ourselves out. We have done everything we know to do. Lord, come in and complete the task for the parents, for the family. It is a family issue when your kids are not serving God. It affects every one of your children. Yep. It affects the grandparents. Right. It affects everybody. Mm -hmm. Come, Lord, and supernaturally light families back on fire this day in yeah. Jesus' name. Yeah, I, I remember now the, in turnaround decrees, the way uh, that breakthrough was described is that the end of the road becomes the gateway for you, your new beginnings. Mm -hmm. God has fresh fire for you. Uh. I love that song uh, that Maverick City has been singing, uh, uh, The New Wine. And, and one of the lines in there is, uh, leaving behind the old flame to receive the new fire today. And um, we just declare the release of new fire for you. You've had to just, uh, some of you have really had to cut the cords to the past in order to embrace the future. And it's been tenuous and you felt the loss. Yeah. But listen, God's about to fill that void with his holy fire and with his grace and with his turnaround. So we're excited for you. We're excited that you are at that place of receiving the breakthrough that he is granting you. And I just believe that even this time here together is a testimony for the breakthrough. Tina, you have anything, any pearls of wisdom? You are full of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. You want to guide our lives into the future here? <laughs> I don't know. I just can't get away from um, God. We ask that you would release a gift of faith for those who felt that their faith is tapped. 
Um, mm. And I've been hearing all morning, which I can't sing, but I'll, I'll say um, that song, He Who Began a Good Work in You is faithful to complete it. So I don't, I don't know if you guys can sing. We might no, no. <laughs> I think that's up to you. Tina, that is absolutely up to you. Oh, well, if, you heard, if you've heard that old song, um, he who began a good work in you, he's faithful to complete it. And just like God brought you into salvation, he's going to bring your kids. Yes. Um, that's just the thing, you know. Somebody asked me recently, "How how do you how do you keep going? How how do you do that?" And I just thought, you know, um, God's the one who saved me. He's the one who saved my husband, and he's going right. to do that for our kids. He it, it's not it's not our parents. Although thank God, we Brian and I both have praying parents, um, but it wasn't them saying you got to do this and th listen to this and do this and do that. It wasn't them. It was the Lord. He's the one who knows how to reach your, your, your child's heart right where they're at. Um, my husband was actually watching TV and he heard a message um, and that's how God encountered him. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, just don't, don't, don't give up. Don't give up. And I'm asking Father God that you would impart a gift of faith for every parent, every grandparent, every spouse, those are for, who are contending for their husbands and their wives uh, to come home. God, I ask for a gift of faith for, yes. the, for those that are contending for their families and contending for our nations. God, we thank you that you are the author of our faith. Yes. You are the author, God. Yes. And so we just receive that right now. We just take a moment and say, we receive that, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the faith that you've placed in our hearts and that you're going to do in our families and in our and in our nation. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. And Mr. Mitchell. No, I just, what, what Tina just prayed out is so important. Um, I just I'm reminded of Hebrews 11, 3, where um, the writer says that by faith, we understand that the aeons, the word is aeons, the ages were framed out, given their definition by the word of the Lord. And as we've been talking about decrees today, that so it, the, the faith portion is so vital because we start to we see the invisible realities that God has already that he has in his mind and his counsel concerning a matter concerning a situation concerning our children and we come into agreement with it and alignment with it um, by by pinning putting the 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 pen of our tongue um, to the to the scrolls of destiny and um, and so I just want to I just want to say that today, um, as we've been um, believing God for a uh, turnaround, as we've been contending that this is a time, as John said, this is a time where God is catalyzing the turnaround. And we're going to come into agreement. We're going to come into continuity with what the Spirit of God is bringing forward by, by aligning our tongues, aligning our mouths, aligning our confessions. It's Hebrews 10, 9 and 10. It says, in the heart, man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, unto wholeness, unto the complete work. So it takes the the in the heart, the conception of the matter takes place, but in the mouth, the manifestation of the full reality takes place. So it has to come the, the, the spirit of faith arising, allowing us to see the things that God has in his counsel and in his mind concerning the matter. And then we begin to set in motion. We, we furnish the ages by the declarations and decrees that come forth out of the heart and mind and counsel of the Father. He already, before it ever, before the day ever dawned, there's an there's a intention of the Father's heart that through the church, the pillar and ground of truth, come on, that we, we have the capability and the capacity to begin to move in sync with the Father and frame out the realities that our children are going to inherit. Frame out the, the ages, the days, the moments, the seconds that they live out and cause pathways to be made for their feet. So today, Father, we just thank you for the spirit of faith, just as Tina prayed. Lord, we thank you for new, uh, a fresh awakening uh, for us to perceive and know your counsel and your mind concerning our children and the things that we're contending for, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that you 
just as Tina prayed, you're the author and the finisher of our faith. You're the beginner and the consummator of the matter, Lord. And it's you're the only one, Revelation chapter five, you're the only one that has been found worthy to loose the seals and yes, sir. wrote the scroll is the only one worthy. Therefore, enemy, no derogatory word, no negative report can annul the council sealed in the scrolls of destiny for our sons and daughters. They cannot be altered because the author is the only one worthy to open the scroll. And he doesn't change his mind concerning his counsel. So, Lord, we bless you. We honor you and we thank you for what you're bringing forward turning around what looks like it's hopeless. This is the hour and the season of your turnaround in Jesus name. I just want to speak into, um, we all know that the enemy is a liar. He's a total liar. Come so on. He, gets, he gets us as parents all wrapped around looking at situations and, right. and, and he's speaking lies to you the entire time that this is never going to turn out. This That's is, right. you know, I've given up on them. He, they're at the, the I'm not going to do one more thing for them. And I just declare truth will right. pierce the darkness yes. that is is coming against you and coming against your family at this time. I declare truth of the word. I declare truth of the gospel, but mostly I declare the truth of who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And I, the truth of his heart, the Lord was telling me, um, just last week, Jolene, I have so many people's hearts on the potter's wheel. And I mm. literally saw him on the potter's wheel molding and turning and reshaping and reforming people's Jesus. hearts. And I feel yes. like that it was right after Turnaround Tuesday's um, broadcast that I saw that picture. And I knew the Lord was saying he is reforming our hearts at this time. He's bringing our hearts and molding them to understand he's molding our hearts into his. And we mm. have to believe that God is a good God and that he is entirely capable. And the, and the, the truth of who the Lord is, is going to pierce the darkness. I just decree and declare that. Today. Jesus. It's going to mm. pierce the darkness that is emanating and, and, and emanating around your mind, I declare the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. I agree with that. And as we close out the broadcast today, we'll have a special video to close things out. Um, this has been one of the most profound broadcasts, if not the most profound broadcast that we've had so far. Please get this out to people that uh, you believe may benefit from it. Get it out on social media. It's on Facebook Live, YouTube Live. Uh, if you want to go to the YouTube page, our YouTube page, and just go to the live portion, you can forward it anywhere and everywhere. Make sure that this gets out far and wide because the word of the Lord is really, really clear through all of us today. And uh, the, the prayers are coming forth from the very heart of the Father for his children. And, you know, Tina, uh, you might want to uh, recruit Chris Mitchell, like, you know, for maybe writing a book. <laughs> what was about the make our tongues the pens? That <laughs> oh, that no, that was so I mean, good. How do you do that? I, I mean, oh. you just say things in You're a way that just come straight from heaven. <laughs> Amen. And I, I oh. agree. I agree. <laughs> So who wants to close us out uh, before we close out? I also want to uh, just say this. I want to give just a little taste of where we're going. OK, um, again, very excited that uh, turnaround decrees has reached number one in the Pentecostal charismatic categories uh, with Amazon um, <coughs> within a day of the uh, broadcast. Some 60,000 viewers have watched the interview. And uh, please go and watch the Sid Roth interview that we, we did. This is not about us. This is about the Lord breathing yes, on a sir. movement. Yes. 
Yes, and sir. Um, we're so excited for what he is framing out and launching in this season. One of the things that we've been endeavoring to do from the very beginning is get the technology right to be able to host a, uh, um, a, com- a, a basically a prayer conference call, a prayer call in conjunction with this broadcast. So I, I just want to say we're working on that now. We're pretty close to uh, getting things set so that we can do this because we want to take uh, eventually the final 15 minutes of the broadcast or so and just have some live prayer uh, with the prayer family. And again, um, we would love, it, it, there's just something when we actually do pray together and we can hear each other's voices. It's mm-hmm. just precious. And and it gives a sense of family that really doesn't come any other way. So uh, please pray with us about that. And um we, we do believe that it's time for um, multiplication, too. So let's uh, just be sensitive to, you know, the opportunities that are ahead to bless someone with a book or, or invite somebody to join the broadcast. We just really want you to, um, and, and you may still feel the stirring from the Lord. As Jolene said earlier, start a Turnaround Tuesday prayer group yourself. Yes. That's that's what where the the rubber meets the road. That's where the power of God is going to be manifested. We are going to see from sea to shining sea, uh, 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 an awakening, and a move of the Spirit of God that brings holy conviction and unlocks holy love uh, within a generation that barely knows Jesus right now. So really, and, and John, about- may I just say too about turnaround decrees. Uh, it will it will absolutely ignite your faith. The book, if you don't have it, it will absolutely ignite your faith because it's going to put the tools and the sword in your hand to be able to to see this realized on your own. But at the same time, it's the it's the roadmap that John and Jolene lay out that is laid out in the book of 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 the the testimony of the process that God brought them through the prayers that were prayed the 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 strategy of partnering with the Lord to see this realized all of those things will just arouse your faith awaken you to be able to believe beyond what you're what you're uh, currently seeing with your natural eyes and perceiving with your natural senses so I I gotta say it is a tremendous tool and resource for this hour of history especially because this is a defining era. We are literally framing in this in this season, the Lord is causing uh, the ages that will be inherited by not only us, but our children and their children after them are being outfitted and given their definition by the decrees in the mouth of his sons and daughters. And this book will help you to step into that in a in a extraordinary way. The most profound book on the on the on the subject that exists, in my humble opinion. So please, please, if you don't have it, pick it up. It will bless your life in tremendous ways. Well, thank you, Chris. I, I guess with that, why don't we uh, just roll the roll the tape for. Wow. And thank you, Joshua, for that amazing video clip. Please uh, join the movement. Sign up for the movement at turnaroundtuesday.com. Get yourself a copy of the book. And uh, we're just honored again to have you all with us. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Chris Mitchell. Thank you, Tina Pugh. We love you guys so much. So proud of you guys. You are the, you model turnaround decrees. That's what you do in your daily lives. And I just want to thank you guys for what y'all are doing behind the scenes for families that you don't even know and for our nation. We just, we love you guys. Bless you. We love you. And uh, God bless you all. Thank you so, so very much. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom.
That's the Father's blessing to you. God bless you.